How y'all doing? I'm Z here again, guys. Today, we're here with a knife review. And what knife is it? It is not the Buck Bantam Nano. That's just here for a comparison. Today, we got a CRKT. And this is the CRKT Pazoda 2. Pazoda 2. It's not focusing. There it is. It's a 6470 model. Um, there is a Pazoda also, which comes in uh, 6480, which I believe is the razor's edge or the straight blade. And there's a 6490, which is a combo edge. And they are larger knives than this one. This is the smaller one, uh, which is why I've got this here. Um, let's take a look at it. Move this to the side. All right, here it is. This is the Pazoda 2. Take a look at it. Let's see, if maybe we get it in the light here. Do a little focusing in on it. Now, this is a frame lock. On the CRKT website, they call it a liner lock. Or a locking liner but it's not it's definitely a frame lock because this has no liners uh, the frame of it the handle material is stainless steel 2CR13 nice brushed finish there nice black in color on the other side it's a uh, it has a gray titanium nitride coating on the blade and I believe also I'm not positive, but I think this side, as well as the pocket clip, is gray titanium nitride coating. The grind on it, they call it a high flat grind. It's not a full flat, so the grind starts, I guess, slightly above 50%. It is a modified clip point. The Rockwell hardness of the blade is 58 to 59. The blade material is 8CR14 MOV. Now, I don't have a lot of experience with 8CR14 MOV. Uh, I do have quite a bit of experience with 8CR13 MOV, which is the uh, material that both Kershaw and Spyderco use to make most of their overseas produced blades is a Chinese steel. Um, the 8CR13 MOV is actually a really good steel. Uh, I haven't had no issues with it at all. Um, I don't know if I have anything handy here, which is 8CR13 MOV. Um, a couple that I can just think of off the top of my head is the Spyderco, like the Tenacious and Persistence. Those are all 8CR13 MOV. Uh, as well as a lot of your Kershaws, for example, the Kershaw Oso Suite. Uh, I think the Kershaw Volt 2. Like I said, most of the Kershaws that are produced overseas are 8CR13 MOV. This is 8CR14 MOV. It's probably uh, one of the better Chinese steels out there. Maybe not the best, but it's it's pretty higher higher end. Higher end? I wouldn't say higher end, but it's it's a pretty good steel. Um, the 8 CR 13 MOV uh, holds a good edge. It's easy to sharpen. Um, this has been my experience with the Kershaw and Spyderco blades. Kershaw and Spyderco blades. So this knife, give you a couple more stats on it. Overall length. Let's take a look. Open overall length is. Let's see here. From the tip to the rear, we're looking at about five inches. 5.25 inches, 5.025, 5 and a what, a sixteenth? Um, and the closed length of it is slightly under three inches. Yeah, maybe it's nope. A sixteenth of an inch smaller. Let you take a look at that. 
not quite three inches. They call it three inches on CRKT clothes, but it's actually not quite three inches. Um, compare that to the Buck Bantam Nano. And this one is slightly over. Slightly over three inches, but I think they call this three inches as well. Um, so three inches, but this is actually slightly under, so I don't know, 2.999 <laughs> inches. And this is 3.001 maybe. Um, focus out a little bit here. So in your pocket, they're gonna take up about as much room. It is a wider blade than the Nano. So if we stand them up. It does stick up above the Nano a bit. So it's a bit wider in that respect. Uh, as far as the thickness, it does appear that the Buck Nano, Bantam Nano, is thicker. Man, I got some crappy light here, guys. I'm sorry about that. So if I did this in front of the window, I'd have good light. Wrong.